Hi everyone and welcome back to another video tutorial from Card Crafts by Lily. We're going to do this little card today. Um, I had put this up on Facebook previously and a number of people have asked me to share how I did it. Now, I have shared the mirroring technique before. Um, you'll have seen it using the, the goose from Moon Lake. I will point out that this um, on this card, I actually fact found the technique much harder because it's a more solid image. When you put it onto your window sheet, it has a tendency to slip. So it's fingers crossed for me. So <laughs> but anyway, we'll have a go at it. So we're going to do this today. And it's like the two little Scotty dogs in way up in the Highlands somewhere. So I hope you enjoy it. This is the little stamp set, the Hot Diggity Dog stamp set. And you get the four little doggy images and three little bodies. Lots of lovely sentiments with it as well. I really, really like these. And we're going to use the loveliest tree stamp set. I haven't um, uh, videoed this before. I have to thank my Stampin' Up! colleague Gillian Whitcomb for the loan of this. I've actually ordered this now that I know it's not going to retire. I absolutely love it. It's beautiful. So let's get started. I'll take a second just to tidy this up. Okay, now to do the braying. Um, I use my speedball brayer from Stampin' Up! and this is the soft sky ink pad. Excuse the noise, this is the noisy part. When you're inking it up, only pull or push in one direction. Don't see so. Make sure it's well covered. If you're new to braying, start off the cardstock. This is the Whisper White cardstock. It's perfect for this. I'm used to it, so I'm going to start on it. You go off either side of the cardstock. You never stop in the middle. And when you want it to travel far, far down the, the card, you go very fast with your brayer. If you were wanting to concentrate it more in one area, you would put the ink, apply the ink on slowly. I want it to travel down a fair distance, so I'm going fairly quickly before the ink dries out. Now the soft sky is a light coloured ink, so it takes a little bit longer to get it to apply to a depth that you wish. Uh, don't forget there's always the re-inkers too because this braying and sponging does make your ink pad thirsty. And they're not at all expensive. I'm going to change now to a pair of pizzazz and do the same thing again. Okay, happy with that. So the next thing I want to do quickly is make a mask of a horizon line. Oops, it is. Probably about there. Bring in my sponge dauber, my always artichoke sponge dauber and my always artichoke ink pad. I keep a sponge dauber for every colour of ink pad that I have. Just let me draw in a line to help you put these hills in. That's a wee bit of a horizon line to take the lead the eye to there. Move it up very, very, very slightly and start doing your hills. Let's pretend these are the beautiful highlands of Scotland. Use the edge of your dauber to get, when, when you're happy with the shading, to get a more definite line. And I'm 
just doing that one much lighter as a suggestion of a hill in the background. Maybe colour that a little bit. Okay, that's the, the hill stamp. to bring in the lovely Zatree stamp set. This is beautiful. Um, and I am going to purchase it and return this one to my lovely friend. I'm doing it, I'm inking it up in, actually I'll do it the other way, I'm inking it up in the Always Artichoke and I'll add a bit of light and shade to that later. I don't put this um, fir tree in the centre because of the hills. I don't know, it, I need it slightly off balance looking. That's just a personal thing, so I'm going to move it over. Give it a couple of seconds. Yep. Give it another ink up this end, and I'm going to just add these ones to the side. There. Right, I bring in a little Marina Mist and my Marina Mist Dauber just to give the Sky a little bit more depth, sponge light there on the outside. Okay, right now to start on the image of our little dog. I'm going to start with my memento wing pad, the tuxedo black, to give it really good colour. Just check that's nice and inky. Okay, now I think I would like this little fellow about here. I'm sorry, there's a bit of shadow on this. Um, the lighting isn't the best. Oops. Oh gosh, I tipped that a little bit. I think I'll be able to hide that okay. Wouldn't be like me. And I now need to bring in my stamp -a -jig. I don't know if you've ever used this before. It has a rough side and a smooth side. For the classic ink pads, we will use the smooth side. And what I want to do is it doesn't really matter but how well this is inked in this case you position your I'll keep it under this so you can see it the edge of your imaging sheet into the corner tightly into the corner of your stamp imaging hold the, the imaging sheet there make sure that it's nice and tight get your stamp Place it into the corner. Don't go anywhere near your cardstock. Keep it high. Into the corner, nice and tight, and then loosely just let it slip down onto the imaging sheet. And there we have our little doggy, or our little doggy's head. What we want to do now is place it where you want it on the cardstock. If you can see that. Hopefully about there. I'll zoom that in a tiny fraction. Now, the next thing you do, again, it's the same process, although it's at an angle, but the image is where I want it. Hold this tight down to your cardstock. Place your stamp magic tool back in. Hold it exactly where you want. Don't let that slip. Don't let that move. Now, this time you ink up. Check that there's plenty of ink on our little doggy. Same process again, tuck it into the corner, let it slide down, move your stamp image tool away. And hopefully I've done this right. Yay! So that helps me to perfectly position it there. Now for the difficult part. 
Okay, place the imaging sheet in the corner again as before. Now try not to let this slip, whatever you do. Put it down, lift it off, turn it over and try and get it to go nose to nose where you want it. Put one end of your sheet down and then your little doggy, and this is where the fingers are crossed. Lift it. That's not too bad. It will need a little bit of colouring in, but I've done worse. And you're going to follow the same process again with his little body. Fingers crossed. So try this a little bit. Down with your imaging sheet in the corner nice and tight. Stamp up your dog, make sure he's nice and black. Place him down, try not to let him slip. Okay, up we go and Him about here. Yeah, that's not too bad. So now what I need to do is define him a little more, a little bit more, and colour him in. So if you bear with me, I'll do that as quick as I can. Okay, using my basic black. Stamp and write marker, I've got ink all over my fingers as usual. I'm going to use the, the pen end to start off with. Okay, now we use the, let me just get it, basic grey for his little nose. Yeah, the two noses are a bit different, but that's ground. He's not looking at himself in the mirror, he's conversing with his little chum. Pacific point. Let's see, we'll do a stripey jumper. Tangerine Tango. Real red. Pacific point again. Some white gel. Pam. Let's 
give them a little bit of bling. Yay! Thank heavens that worked out okay, apart from this little smudge, but we'll deal with that. So, on to the next bit. I want to define our trees a little better. Let's see if this helps a little bit. And bring a bit more light and shade into it. So I'm going to use my basic black on the tree and just scratch it. The, the, the middle of the tree, in my mind, the middle of the tree will be the darkest area. So I just scratch a bit off. Not too heavy. Basic black to the centre of the tree, very lightly. That's even a little bit heavy, maybe. And so, just to give it a bit of shade. Also helps bring back in these any little ones that you've lost. Sorry about flash not in front of you. And the whisper white. I would do it, I'm pretending the light's coming from the right hand side, so scratch very lightly, very, very lightly. Literally hardly touching the card at all. I dab some of it off with my finger if I think it's a little bit heavy. And then bring in, let me see, my always artichoke again. Just to give under the trees a little bit of, that's maybe too heavy, a little bit of shading. See that a bit more clearly here. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is bring in some foliage, and I want to hide this little bit here, so bear with me. And many of you would have seen me use this before. This is the little bird stamp from um, Moon Lake, but all I want is the foliage along the bottom, in this instance anyway. The wee bird's beautiful, but I don't want them in this image. Just this bit at the bottom to fit in here. So I'm going to use the corner of my ink pad. Oh boy, the lighting is terrible in here today. And I'm going to rub it just into the image. I hope you can see that okay. That's actually too much. <laughs> and my niece who does my nails for me wonders how I managed to get them in such a mess. It would be something to do with putting my fingers in ink, wouldn't it? Anyhow, so here goes. we are. Now it just remains for me to colour this in and bring it to life.
Okay, basically what I've done, I've used, uh, let me see, my Old Olive, I think, was it? No, it wasn't. It was my Mossy Meadow marker. To bring the, the foliage in a little bit, I've used a bit of the black marker, again, to create shade and the white gel pen to bring it just a little flash of light back in and ended with my Always Artichoke. Uh, dauber to fill in the bottom. So that is more or less the image done. We just have to assemble it now. Okay, now I use my Tombow glue. I love this glue so much. It's a great multi-purpose glue. It's just a wee bit here. Um, relatively strong and it gives me a few seconds wriggle room to set this down right because I never set it on straight. See what I mean? <laughs> oh dear 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 dear. There we go. I don't map this up. I actually quite like the the card going straight on to the the black there. Hope you can see that okay. And the last thing I want to do is put a little sentiment on it. So again going to use the basic black and my modern label punch. This punch is retiring. Now in June I'm a little bit gutted because I love it. However I'm excited to see what else stamping up inside in its place. Oh, I've already seen something on the back of that piece, but we'll just turn it over. And um, so if you want this punch, and I would actually strongly recommend people to get it because it's fab. You would need to get it straight away. The retiring list is on my blog and um, it's selling out very, very, very quickly. So I'm using um, a stamp called Friend of Friend and it's from Teeny Tiny Sentiments. There are loads of them. There are 24 stamps in Teeny Tiny Sentiments cover a range of occasions. A brilliant one to have and I was so relieved to see that it wasn't on the retirement list because this fits perfectly. These all fit perfectly into um, the word window punch. So let me just stamp this down. Yep, for once. Not a mistake. Word window punch. Let me, you're messy with glue and you get a wee extra piece like this when it dries. Um, there's an adhesive, Stamping Up have a fab little adhesive remover. And the last thing to do is put a couple of dimensionals on it. Now, this sheet's almost finished, but I do keep it because I use little bits that are left over at the edge. Well, that's part of my telephone number in the back of that. Hmm. Anywho. Okay, that's us finished. I just have to put a little insert on the inside, but that's it done. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do check out my blog. It's um, Card Crafts by Lily, all one word. I'll put the details at the end of this video and uh, the materials. If, if you're interested in buying the materials, you can purchase them through my shop there. I would I would love to be your demonstrator. So if you've any questions or queries, comments, I'd love to hear from you. Please do get in touch. So for now, until next time, bye bye.